Now for perspective, a new work has appeared in French bookstalls, one which the New York Times has called deeply moving. The girl who smiled beads is our guest's account of how she fled in 1994 from what the international community now classifies as a genocide in Rwanda, trekking across Africa until reaching the US. Clementine Wamaria joins us now in the studio. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us here on uh, France 24. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Now, uh, when you first sat down to write this book, who were you writing it for? Was it more a personal thing that you wanted to get off your chest or were you adamant and determined that other people had to learn about what you went through? All the above. I, I spent 15 years meditating and then five years in execution. And I really wanted people, especially leaders of the world, who are making decisions every single day um, about people who are seeking refuge or when the war is waged, uh, for people to know what a, a little girl, um, what a 15-year-old girl like my sister uh, have to go through. Uh, but I also wanted to speak to the youth uh, because the youth were the next leaders of the world. I wanted everyone to know daily lives of a person without a, a home, a person without a country, a person without, uh, without resource to be able to thrive and be. But also the opposite of that, um, the opposite of when you have everything in your life, how to be aware of other people who do not have the resources. So um, it's been, uh, uh, it's for all, anyone who can read in now six languages, hopefully I'll get to maybe 15 languages, yeah. In what ways has the, the writing process and putting this uh, epic journey of yours down on paper, how has that been cathartic uh, for you. How would you have felt, for example, if you hadn't put this down on paper? Uh, I have put it somewhere else. I, would've, uh, I wish I could sing. I could sing it. Uh, I am an artist uh, by training and so I would have drawn it, I have painted it, uh, and I did all those things. I just wanted to get this experience out of my system so that I can be free. I can be free and I can know that um, where I'm operating from. I'm operating from a place of, 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 of kindness, I'm operating from a place of love, and I'm operating from a place of peace. But if I had not organized it, um, who knows where I will be. But this uh, book is an encouragement to anyone who have gone to any atrocities, to anyone who feels invisible, to anyone who feels silenced by the destruction of the world to come forward. And so the process, if anyone wants to know, I am happy to talk a little bit more uh, beyond the television, of course. Now, I understand that you don't like the use or the, 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 the term genocide. I was wondering if you could tell us why you don't like that word. You know, a few, uh, just a year ago, I was, uh, I, I gave Ted a poem and the poem uh, was to be able to stretch that word uh, because the word genocide, I understood when the word was uh, presented in 1940s to be able to describe the mass atrocity in Europe uh, against Jewish people. Um, but I understand that the word does not give you the, 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 the bloodshed. It does not give you the, um, and this is playing, it does not give you the, the loss of, of families. It does not give you uh, anything that really, um, if you ever gone through that experience, you know that that word cannot describe what you have lost and what you've gone through. And so it's, it's, it's bloodless, it's clinical, and it doesn't give you, I, it, yeah, so. I was wondering if you could just describe to us when you look back now today at the events 20 years ago, what, what, what's your thought process? Do you still blame people for what happened or are you, are you more focused on more positive territory? Do I look like I'm blaming anybody? No. I am here to be able to remind us as a human family to be able to realize the categories and the labels that we have created among each other. It does not serve us. It does not solve our evolvement. And so, um, the, 
the way I'm approaching the daily life is an example with my family, with my friends, with me being here. And so it's a way to be able to start a conversation uh, that is a bit harder. That is not just only Rwanda, it's Burundi, it's Congo, it's Tanzania, it's Malawi, it's Mozambique, it's South Africa, it's Zimbabwe, it's, it's here in France, it's in Asia. I just, I am passionate about our humanity and I'm passionate to live in peace but to be able to make the conversation a non-political and non-economical just on a human level. I just wanted to go very back briefly to the survivors of what happened in 1994. Are you in touch with any of them and what kind of help are they getting? Are there associations there that are, that are helping these people? The survivors. I am a survivor. I'm here right now, and many survivors, we're out there taking care of each other. We're out there um, listening to but each is, other. Is enough being done to look after them? It's, it's enough being done to look after each other? We are taking care of each other. What's enough? Uh, is the enough is, is enough more conversation. Have you been to Rwanda? No, I haven't. You should go to Rwanda. You should, should go to Rwanda and you should see for yourself because you, you should go to Burundi, you should go to Congo, you should go to all the countries that I lived in to be able to see how we're taking care of each other. And we're going to continue taking care of each other because we know how the world could be silent, but also we know how the world could be so loud. And so um, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn and to listen and uh, to be able to understand how we can continue as the survivors of the most horrible uh, experience, how to take care of each other. Just very briefly, what does, the, what does the future have in store for you? Do you plan to write about Rwanda again? Oh, well, you know, if you read the book, it's not just only about Rwanda, sure. it's about everything. I am excited to be able to, um, to immerse myself in a community of people who have gone to intense experiences such as war from all over the world, to be able to listen how they want to lead us forward, uh, either through um, in, in political realm or an economical realm and social realm. And so I'm here as a listener, but I'm here also um, as a, to be directed. Uh, and so that we can have a life that is more inviting for everybody. OK, yeah. Clementina, Juan Maria, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you so much.